Tweet it and again, uh, and if we could put that up, uh, I think Who you might be right. Uh, he says, yeah. well, he says <laughs> this, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has taken a very weak position on Hillary Clinton crimes. Where are emails and DNC server and intel leakers? I mean, this sounds like the setup. He's done. This is what it's blaming. It's going to blame it on Hillary Clinton, not investigating her. After she's been investigated, this right. will be the, 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 the predicate well, for it. Well, no, this is <laughs> right after his Attorney General, Joe. Man. Well, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's remarkable. Clint, let me bring you in here. Do Donald Trump, uh, and I'm trying to remember who, maybe it was Jonah Goldberg, might have been Eric Erickson, but a strong conservative voice uh, said over the past couple of days that every problem Donald Trump is having right now in the Russian investigation. Uh, and the reason he has Mueller uh, is because of one self-inflicted wound after another. He and Jared Kushner were pushing to fire James Comey. They should have known. And if they knew anything about Washington, they would have known. That would have just amped up the pressure on people like Rod Rosenstein and other professionals to actually find somebody like Mueller who's beyond reproach. Now they're talking about firing the Attorney General of the United States, a man that Jared Kushner and Donald Trump spent 2016 praising as the greatest mind in Washington, D.C., the smartest man they had ever met, the most loyal and honest person they ever knew. That and, and now Donald Trump is trying to throw, just like Flynn, just like they defended Flynn, mm -hmm. nonstop. Now they're trying to throw the Attorney General of the United right. States overboard. A man who, by the way, let us not forget Clint, a former member of the United States Senate with friends in the United States Senate. And it looks like just as Donald Trump keeps making matters worse for himself by day trading, looks like he's going to do it again. And there is no doubt, as with the FBI director, the new FBI director, House, uh, Senate Republicans aren't going to uh, uh, allow anybody like Giuliani to get through the Senate, are they? It, they're going. So he'll have you know, no you, attorney you, general. I could name. You, you look at McCain. Uh, you look at Susan Collins. Oh, you look at Ben Sass. I could name you four or five Republicans that aren't going to allow this to become a banana republic. So is this a case, Clint, where? He's just going to make matters worse for himself yeah, again. I think, the, I, I think the message is clear with this uh, Trump team that if you're not a family member or a general and if you jump on the Trump train, you're eventually going to end up under the Trump train. And he has done that consistently. You know, he's constantly run over people that have been loyal to him. He speaks of loyalty last night, but it's very much a one-way street. Uh, you know, he does not push loyalty back to them. He won't challenge uh, his family members, if you watch, or, you know, Kushner by extension or other generals. I think he knows yeah. that will desperate that will deliberately un undermine his base. They will not go for that. But anyone else <laughs> is part of the swamp and if they if he can't compel them or sort of push them to do what he wants, then he's going to send them right to the exit doors. And I think that for our country this is damaging because if you want to go and serve your country and you hear those statements, uh, we see low staffing at the State Department. We have major gaps at the Defense Department. Uh, throughout the intelligence community, people are heading to the exit doors. Uh, this is hurting our country, and what we're seeing is just blatant nepotism and staffing like we're a banana republic. Wow. And John, John Heilman, look at the, let, let's just look back at who are the only two major figures that come out and endorse Donald Trump early. One was Jeff Sessions from Alabama, who's about to be fired for doing what every lawyer, every first year law student even would tell him he had to do. And then Chris Christie, who got thrown under the bus repeatedly by this administration. It, and, and well, and then number three, exhibit three, look at the House Republicans, who Steve Bannon threatens and the president threatens to pass a health care bill that nobody liked. They pass it, and then he turns around and says the bill is mean spirited a couple months later. Who would ever expect any loyalty back from this man? Right. Well, Joe, I mean, I, it's, an, it's an extraordinary thing that's worth playing out now, and I, I think it's right to focus on how extraordinary this is. I mean, the president in The New York Times last week basically gave a vote of no confidence to his attorney general. He's had publicly, he's had people on uh, his surrogates out yesterday saying, oh, no, the president's fully behind Jeff Sessions. And then this morning we wake up and see this tweet, which is, again, which is again, it's another just slap in the face to Sessions. Uh, and it's an extraordinary thing. Presidents are often frustrated with their attorneys general. Um, we saw that with Bill Clinton and Janet Reno. We've 
seen it before because of the way the Attorney General has some degree of independence. Again, often frustrated, but never lashing out in this way. And again, I, but it looks to me like President Clinton is just, or President Trump is just trying to get Jeff Sessions to resign. So I want to ask Julie Pace, what is Jeff Sessions thinking? Uh, last week, when, when Trump attacked him in the New York Times, people said, Jeff Sessions w will almost certainly resign now. Instead, the next morning, he came out and said, oh, no, I'm going to stay here. If you're Jeff Sessions and his allies you in the Justice Department, you wake up to this today, and the president is again goading you to quit. How can you stay at the top of the Justice Department under these circumstances? It's pretty amazing. I mean, that's been the country. question for a week. How, how does Jeff Sessions stay in this job when it's clear that the president actually does have confidence in him. What we're told from Sessions advisors, from his confidants, is he loves this job. You know, Jeff Sessions is this guy who, when he was in the Senate, kind of toiled in, in obscurity. He was pushing hardline immigration policies. He was a, a bit on his own until he latched on to the Trump campaign. And now he's sitting in this job. This is basically the pinnacle of his career. And he feels that, separate from the Russia investigations, that he is pushing a proactive agenda on criminal justice on immigration. So for him to walk away from this would be giving up, you know, basically his dream job right now. And he's going through the the motions of that, that what that would yeah. entail for him. But, you know, how how long do you sit there and take this? And, and, and you know, what does it say about you if you're willing to be publicly humiliated by the president well, day after day like this? And big picture, Joe, it feels like he's treating Sessions and many others along the way in this administration like Rosie O'Donnell. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't understand that when he gets into a battle with, let's say, Rosie O'Donnell. Right. Uh, ba back in 2005, 2006, and they're insulting each other right. back and forth. He, he, he still is in that mindset that those are, those are two people that sparred back and forth, and you never really knew whether it was, like, how serious the routine was. But it made people that love Rosie love Rosie more. Love people that love Trump, love Trump more. It was a and media it thing. was just a media spectacle. He doesn't understand that when he's in Washington, D.C., and he is fighting his attorney general, and he is fighting uh, Bob Mueller, and he is fighting uh, James Comey, that this isn't a media game. This isn't something you don't just this boost your ratings up. In fact, his, ra his ratings in Gallup in Washington, D.C., it's a completely different battle. And I know even Rosie O'Donnell would say that. This is not a game. This is, this is not a, a media battle. Um, and, and Clint, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about Jeff Sessions for a second. Uh, some people are saying, how do you stay in a job if you're being humiliated every day, uh, and I've heard, I've heard that over the past couple of days, I, I think Jeff Sessions would be a patriot, yep. actually, if he stayed in his job. And he's being abused every day by a president who is clearly trying to obstruct justice from being done. I'm not saying legally that you can prove obstruction of justice yet in court, but he is clearly trying to stop justice from being served. He's clearly trying to kill an investigation that he knows is moving in a direction that puts him in legal peril and his family in legal peril. If you could advise Jeff Sessions right now, would you agree with me that he needs to stay there and be a patriot uh, and force Donald Trump to fire him? Or do you think he should move on? I, I think he should stay, and this mm -hmm. has been consistently something that I, I've heard that I disagree with. Uh, as a government servant, if you're committed to the Constitution and the people of America, you, you need to stay in place and you need to do your job. Uh, if he leaves, he's doing exactly what the president wants. Uh, for the president to fire him is a much more aggressive action. He's hoping that Sessions will probably exit on his own accord. And if I were Sessions, I wouldn't go anywhere. I would keep doing my job. I'd try and uh, push my agenda. It's one that I oftentimes personally disagree with but as somebody who's been picked to fill that position he's been there only six months I would plant my feet right into the ground I wouldn't go anywhere I would make the president fire me at this point because the, the president oh, needs to learn amen. that the Department of Justice uh, is not to be influenced and overtly pressured by the president of the United States I differ well and Mika there's another you, tweet you, 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 uh, Harold disagrees okay. by the way should we can I Alex 
What's the tweet yeah, Mika, say? Mika, read oh, the tweet. It says, Mika, problem Mika, is the, the acting head of the FBI and the person in charge of Hillary investigation, Andrew McCabe, got 700000 from H for wife. <laughs> my God. Harold, Harold, oh my he God. put McCabe up as a possible finalist to be his FBI director. Like, oh does, does he not? Someone needs it, to what, run into his bedroom the memory? and grab the he, phone. He, McCabe was on his finalist list as an FBI director. And now he's going back to complaints that he had in September or October of last year. I, I want, I do want, I want people to be observing and taking notes today and not acting like this is just like every other day and oh, you should have seen this coming. This, no, this is happening in real time. What is today? What's the date, guys? Uh, it what is July 25th, 25. Six July the 25th. To July the 25th. Circle it on your calendar. This guy is spinning wildly out of control. He's watching TV. I know. I know you never watch this show, Donald. <laughs> but whatever show you're watching is making you crazy. Not crazy. Not I don't Joe. think you're crazy. But it's making you act crazy. So you really need to turn to Sports Center. <laughs> And you need to stop watching because Joe. these tweets make you look really bad. Harold Ford, so, uh, let's move on and let's hope that right now he's hearing da da da, da da da, <laughs> instead of Morning Joe, because it's seriously not in the best interest of the United States of America, it's our not. allies, or the world at large if the president serious. watches Morning Joe. He needs to stop. Harold, uh, why, I, I am 100% serious. He needs to stop watching this show. And anything Harold, else. Um, um, I would agree. But it, it shows the influence of the show, and, which and is anything a else. positive. Harold, might Harold, let's get back to though Jeff Sessions, and then we got to wrap this up quickly. Right. You think Jeff Sessions should leave? Uh, tell us why. I think he should resign. One, uh, if, if he disagrees with the president, if he believes he's lost, if he believes honestly that he's lost the confidence of the president, and this morning, at least the last seven or eight minutes, has given us more evidence to that fact. Wow. And then when you consider that Jeff Sessions went before the Senate just a few weeks ago and basically invented a new privilege, saying that he would not divulge conversations between he and the president, although privilege had not been invoked. When you talk about loyalty, I think Sessions has shown that. I would agree with Clinton in this regard. I disagree with a lot of the ways that Jeff Sessions is going about doing his work at. Uh, at the Justice Department. Having said that, he should stay if he has the confidence of the president. If you don't have the confidence of the president in your job, I think, you, I think you have to resign. Well, I think you, you, we still have checks and balances in the system that can address this. Uh, but I just differ with you and, you, with you and Clint on, on, on that regard. All right, we are going to continue to talk about this and I do hope he switches sports. We have, uh, you know, I would just like for Joe. I'd like for Joe to do the rest of the show as close to the camera as he was a little <laughs> while ago. That'd be kind of awesome. Just do the whole show in that really tight. Get it's, that face right in there. I'm just going to say we, <laughs> we all. You, 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 we do that. Yeah. We all <laughs> calm down because with, with ESPN. Just stop like watching. I, I, love, I love that. You don't, don't need to do that, news. Joe. It, it's fine. Go to Sports Center. The story speaks for itself. Go to Sports Center. Still ahead on yeah. Morning Joe from the two Intel committees <laughs> meeting with Jared Kushner, the president's son in law, who says he did not collude. Senator Joe Manchin and Congressman Eric Swalwell and Joaquin Castro, also Republican Congressman Charlie Dent, joins the conversation. Plus, the Democrats roll out a new slogan, but mm, they need a person. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.